Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new GPS from Qpilot and specifically the new Hue 3 GPS. Now a couple of weeks ago I talked about the new Cube Orange Plus and now we also have an updated version of their Hue GPS that not only has all of the same features and capabilities that we had in the original Hue 3 but some interesting new ones as well including a dual can input for use with a new upcoming feature that we'll talk about later on in the video. Now, just before I get into it, I just want to say a massive thank you to Ben at 3DXR. We would not have been able to make this content without his support. He has very kindly sent these over to me to have a look at. And if you're interested in getting yourself anything for the Cube Pilot system, for plane, boat, rover, or anything else I may add, please do check out the link to their website in the description. He holds an incredible amount of stock, not only for Ardra Pilot based aircraft, but anything you may need to get yourself up and running. So if you're interested in getting yourself either this GPS, the Cube or anything else, as I've already mentioned, please do check them out. Anyway, let's get on with this video and let's take a closer look at what's changed with the new Hue 3 Plus. Okay, so as I've said, we have here the new Hue 3 Plus. It comes in the same box as the original Hue 3, but this is the new Plus model. And I'll be honest, there are a lot of changes under the hood here. We also have a new stand, which is available for the Hue 3 as well, designed specifically to use with the GPS module. And we'll take a closer look at that a little bit more in a minute. Now, the Hue 3 itself, looks a lot like the original model, the plus I should say. You can see that it is the same overall design that we had before. No buttons now on the Hue 3 series. You can see it's got a plus there to designate the plus logo. We've got the LEDs on the side that go through and then we've got the little clips at the bottom there for the stand. If we take a look, like the Hue 3, it is CAN based, but the first thing you will also notice is that there are two connectors on this and not one, and that is because it is dual CAN input, and we'll talk about that a bit more in a minute because there's a hidden little feature in this module that will make use of that in the future. Now, the big changes with the Hue 3 Plus compared to the original Hue 3 are as follows. It is still running the Ublox M8P2 chipset. It is capable of GPS, GLONASS, as well as Beidou. It supports a 3D fix of up to 2.5 meters or in RTK mode, 0.025 meters. The real big change though is the processor that's on board. Whereas the original Hue 3 used the STM32 F302, this, the Hue 3 Plus, has the STM32 H757. Now that is a massively powerful processor for a GPS. And in fact, this isn't just a GPS, it is almost a full flight controller in the unit, not only because of that processor, but because of the other sensors that are on board as well. It has dual IMU sensors. It has the ICM42688 and the RM3100. It has a navigation update rate of 8 hertz, and it supports the new updated drone cam protocol at 8 megabits a second. Now, as I mentioned just now, there are two CAN headers on this, and at this moment in time, only one of them is active. The reason there are two CAN headers is not only because of that STM32H CPU, but there is also a remote ID module built into this GPS unit as standard that will be available for future use via Ardra Pilot. And that is what is going to use that other CAN input. That is really interesting to see. It's the first time we've seen it as far as I'm aware from any manufacturer. And whilst it isn't there available to use today, the hardware is built in. It is ready to be activated in the future, allowing you to be compliant with the Ardra Pilot software as we see remote ID propagate around the US. Now, as I said, the module itself externally, though, does look similar, but we do now have this proper stand that's available for it. It is a combination of plastic and carbon fibre. It comes in this little bag. If I just open it up, 
There we go. So you can see we have the stand, we have the carbon fiber section in the middle. We then have the area that bolts to our frame at the bottom and then the part that goes into the GPS. And this simply clips in the nice and straightforward at that point there. You can then drop the cable down the middle so it allows you to put the cables down and through giving you a really nice clean setup. Just going to get them through down the bottom end. Here we go. We can then clip that in place at the back, pull the cable through and there's a little screw there which we would undo and then place that giving us a really nice clean setup for our GPS module. They do still have a downloadable 3D printable version of this if you didn't want to buy the stand, but you do have this nice fully fledged proper carbon fiber stand that is now available from them for it. Now, as you would expect, this here 3 Plus is designed to be used with the Cube series of autopilots. I've got here the new Cube Orange Plus as well, and it would simply plug in via CAN bus into our autopilot. At the moment, as I've said, we're only using the single CAN port, but it's nice and easy to configure. You simply plug it in, and it is then using that all new drone CAN protocol that has been made available in Ardra Pilot. This is a much improved version of the original CAN bus setup that we had in Ardra Pilot. I'm not going to go into it in this video, but there has been a bit of moving around in the world of CAN and drones. However, now we have this open source CAN protocol that Ardra Pilot, the Cube Autopilot, and the Hue 3 fully supports. Now, it's going to be super interesting to see what use cases we get for that new CPU that is in the Hue 3. As I've said, we have that STM32H757 running at 400 megahertz, two megabytes of flash, one megabyte of RAM, and literally you will be able to use this as a fully fledged autopilot in itself in the future, let alone if you need to have something like the Cube, especially in situations like Boat and Rover, you're going to really see things like this here 3 come on. But again, if you're needing something with a lot more capability with that vibration isolated temperature controls IMUs, then you're going to want something like the Cube Orange Plus that I've got here. Now, just before I walk you through the setup on the here 3 Plus, I just wanted to show the LEDs. I've got it plugged in and you can see that we have that wide ranging color changing LEDs on the top and the bottom as well. And the real nice thing about these is that you can set these up to act as a beacon and configure them actually in Ardra Pilot with Lua scripts to do whatever you want. There is a whole host of capabilities around the LEDs in the GPS module. Not only just the configuration Ardra Pilot has a standard, but you can use use things like Lua scripts to be able to do things on these LEDs too. Okay, so to just walk you through how to set this up. Now we've got the two connections on here. At the moment, the one with the green wires is not used. That's for the future use on that internal module that I discussed earlier. We're going to take the one with the red and orange wires and we're going to plug this into CAN port one. You could do it into CAN port two if you wanted to, depending on what your setup is. Obviously for the purpose of this, I'm going to do CAN one and I'll show you the setup for that on CAN one as well. Next, I've got my autopilot hooked up to Mission Planet and it is all now connected. Now, to make sure that we get the GPS working as we would expect, we need to make sure that the GPS is configured to use CAN bus and that our CAN bus ports are turned on as well. And we also need to configure the LED status on the system as well and tell it to use CAN bus for the LEDs rather than use the traditional serial LEDs. So we're going to go into config and we're going to go onto full parameter list. This isn't going to be that easy to see for you on the display here because I am using quite a high resolution screen. However, if you follow it through and the instructions for this are on the Cube Pilot website as well, it is fairly straightforward. So the first thing I'm going to do over here in the search box is type in CAN. That will bring up all of the CAN bus options for the autopilot. And what we're looking for is CAN underscore D1 protocol and CAN underscore D2 protocol. You need to make sure both of these are set to one. So CAN underscore D1 underscore protocol set to one, 
can underscore D2 underscore protocol set to two. That is going to make sure that both of our can ports are set correctly and enabled as well. We've then got our can underscore P1 driver and can underscore P2 driver. Again, these should be set to number one as well. That then will make sure that our can ports are enabled. Once you've done that, you should write your params, making sure that it's saved. And next, you need to set the GPS type. To do this, we're going to search for GPS underscore type. Nice and easy. And the option for this should appear. Here we go. And you need to set the GPS type to nine. If you look on the list, nine is drone can. So rather than using the traditional auto or the normal serial UART bus, we need to set it to nine to make sure that it is picking up the CAN bus protocol. Again, once you've done that, you need to write the params. The last thing we need to do is configure the LEDs. And the term for that is NTF underscore LED. If you search for that, in a moment, it should bring up all of the options for the LEDs. And here we can then set the LED type. So NTF underscore LED underscore types. If we click on this and we need to make sure that we've enabled drone can, which is that option there click off or have the option set to 231, click right params, done. Then you can simply reboot the autopilot. You can do that from the menu with control F or simply disconnect and reconnect. We'll reboot the autopilot. We'll allow it to power up. We'll go back to our main screen, click connect, wait for it to kick in. And now you should see that the GPS now says no fix rather than not detected. You should then also see the LEDs on the GPS change to that flashing yellow, that typical status color that you get for Ardra Pilot. Mine are doing that as we speak right now. You can then go under the setup and we can go into the mandatory and optional hardware and under here, we can see our compass settings. Here we can see that it's detected an internal compass on SPI, but we now have the compass in the GPS module here as well, the UAV CAN one. If we then go under GPS order for CAN GPS bus, you can see that it's listed here, order the node ID and GPS detected. And that's simply telling us that we have the internal compass on the module and the GPS correctly detected on the CAN bus. Now, the final thing I will just show you quickly is how to look at the settings for the CAN bus on the module. Again, we need to jump back over to Mission Planner. So on Mission Planner, what we're going to do is make sure that we are disconnected and I'm going to change the COM port down to the next number down that's listed, which is COM port 34. We're not going to connect at this point, but we're then we're going to go under setup we're going to select drone can stroke UAV can and we're going to select SL can mode can one. That is for can port one. And if we wanted to look at what was on can port two, we would select can two. But we're going to select can one, click OK. And then you will see the CAN bus devices that are connected listed here. Now, the first device at the top here is the GPS and the second device is our autopilot. Because remember, with CAN bus, the autopilot is part of the CAN bus as well. You will always be able to identify the autopilot by its ID of 10 because that is the standard ID that has been given to it via Ardrapilot. Then, for instance, you can see here we've got our ComQ Pilot here 3 operational OK. We can then click on the menu, click on the parameters option. That will open up another screen and this will then show us all of the parameters that are available to adjust on the GPS modules canvas. As you can see here, there is an awful lot available simply because the fact that this unit has a H7 CPU and it is basically running a version of Ardra Pilot as well. There is nothing in here I would recommend you change at this moment in time. However, this is stuff that you can start to look at in the future as we see the use of that internal STM32 H7 CPU and that additional CAN bus get used in the future.
If you did want to change the node ID for the GPS module though, you can do that under here. You can see that we've got all of the canvas and then you've got the can compass dev ID and all of the other options are down here as well. So if you did want to change the node ID, it is available here for you to do so. Okay, so that is it. The here three setup, it's working. We can see it on the canvas port and basically you can see all of the configuration options for it as well. Now, the real nice thing about canvas compared to say the old UART port is that you can put multiple GPS devices on one port. You can use a canvas adapter that allows you to actually, rather than use CAN1 and CAN2, put them all on the same port as long as they've got different IDs. And then you have that serial link setup allowing you to put canvas all over your UAV or your aircraft. We're starting to see more and more of this happen over time. We're seeing more devices with Canvas and it's great to see CubePilot continue to push it. They were one of the first adopters of Canvas on their GPS modules. The Here 2 supported Canvas but you had to swap the cable and now we're here at the Here 3 Plus which is basically the fourth generation again pushing Canvas forward again. Okay, so that is it for this one. Hopefully you have found it interesting. I'm going to cover some of the other features on the Here 3 Plus in the future as we start to understand the capabilities of that H7 processor as well as that new remote ID feature as well, which is in there. Hopefully we will continue to see the Qpilot ecosystem develop. In the near future, I'm going to be talking about the new Here Link 1.1 as well. And I'm going to be showing you the difference between that and the original one. And so so if you're interested in seeing that, please do make sure you are a subscriber of the channel. As I mentioned, I want to say a massive thank you to Ben at 3DXR. We had not have been able to make this content without his support. If you're interested in getting this GPS, the Cube or anything else, including the new Healing version 1.1, please do check out the link to their website in the description. Furthermore, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. And if you'd like to support us via Patreon, there is a link in the description to that as well. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.